afternoon. I am Barryon Franks, OLQ member and lead for Target 4, the arts, career focus up close and personal. Omicron Lambda Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is implementing international program Target 4, the arts, with enthusiasm while exemplifying excellence through sustainable service. The artsy girls of OLQ have accepted our charge to showcase talent in the visual and performing arts, celebrate the contributions of African-American artists, and highlight the artists and artworks of the Harlem Renaissance and Black Arts Movement. Welcome to the arts on a Sunday afternoon, as we focus on successful individuals who have chosen careers in the arts field. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for our very first career focus, Up Close and Personal, featuring photographer Eric Waters. It is my pleasure to introduce our special guest for this afternoon. Eric Waters has been a professional photographer for more than 30 years. Waters decided early on in his career that New Orleans street culture has significant historical value and was worthy of documentation. He is best known for capturing the vibrant and energetic scenes of the Second Line and the New Orleans Mardi Gras Indians. He is one of few photographers with the insider's view of what makes this culture come alive. Again, I introduce our guest, Mr. Eric Waters. Thank you. Okay, hello, Mr. Eric Waters. Uh, thank you for joining AKA OLQ, the arts career focus of Close and Personal. Uh, just for our audience, I just wanna ask, what is a photographer? Like, what is it to be an artist, to be a photographer? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I guess uh, wanting to photograph something that you find interesting. Um, when I first started out in photography, I was shooting a Polaroid camera and uh, I was just taking photos, taking pictures. I wasn't taking images. I didn't know how to take images. I was taking photos with a Polaroid camera. And uh, a couple of guys had been in the civil rights movement. I was working uh, with this group and they saw my interest in taking photos. So they brought me to Marion Porter who became my mentor. And that was my path on quote unquote, becoming a photographer. I, um, yeah, that, that, that's what started me on that path. And I was so enamored with him that, uh, you know, I was so busy trying to work with him and learn as much as I could. And then at some point in time, I ventured out on my own and he told me I wasn't ready. And I shot a wedding. I didn't mess it up, but it wasn't all of that. And he was right, I was not ready. But uh, so I knew I had to learn more and I had to take more photos. And then it became a passion. I mean, I was, I was, I was an amateur photographer, so to speak. And I was just taking what I liked. And then people started calling me a documentarian. I could spell it, but I couldn't consciously, <laughs> I couldn't consciously see myself as a documentarian because I was, I was photographing what I liked and what interested me, whether they interested somebody else or not, that was not my concern at the time. It was what interested me. And of course I was interested in the African retentive culture. That's what I call it in New Orleans. And so I started documenting like my mentor did. He was, but he was an exceptional photographer. He was the uh, first black man's photographer. He was the photographer for the Zulu club. He was a photographer for most of the black churches. He was a photographer for the Louisiana Weekly, the Dan News Weekly, his own monthly publication. He shot for Jet Magazine. I mean, he was all over the place. And uh, I would never and have never attained that kind of recognition. But I was busy shooting what I liked. And it just happened to be the African retentive culture in New Orleans, the Black Mask and Indian the second line, the baby doll, the skeletons, and people, period. Black people, period, right? I mean, that's what I concentrated on. 
I mean, that's not to say that I don't shoot events, which I do, and they include white folks, but my main interest is documenting black people in New Orleans and black people, period, because photography has a history where other photographers of a different ethnicity didn't portray us in the best light. And so I wanted to always be respectful of my subject. I never wanted to photograph them in an embarrassing situation. So that's where I am now. I'm still trying to do the same thing. Yeah, that's so important because often we are not represented either equally or at all. And it's so important to see yourself and it's job like photographers to show us. So I thank you for that. Um, so how did you learn or education preparation? How did you learn to be a photographer? Like how did you learn different uh, things like aperture, f-stop, all the, you know, the things that's required to be a photographer. If someone maybe watching is thinking about doing it as a hobby or wants to do professionally. That's where my mentor came into play. Um, you can teach a photographer the uh, rudiments or the fundamentals of photography, which are the things you just suggested, shutter speed, ISO, aperture, those kinds of things. You can't teach a photographer how to see, right? Mm -hmm. And some people have an eye, but it can be developed. I have a friend of mine who's a highly profile photographer out of New York. He said, shoot, shoot, shoot some more. And did, did I say shoot again? So, sometimes happens for some photographer. Some photographers innately have that gift, but uh, but it can be acquired, I think, by doing a lot of photography, shooting a lot of pictures. It doesn't have to be a particular subject, but it familiarizes. It brings you back to the fundamentals of the three things, you know, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, and. Those are things that help you get a technically proficient image that does not necessarily always translate into an interesting image. It's just that it's technically correct, right? Mm -hmm. Then the other part of it is the emotion and, and what an image may engender to someone. I've always tried to struggle to take a photograph like my friend out of New York say, no, you shoot images that uh, say something without a narrative. It frustrates me to know and when I'm reading magazines and books and going to the galleries and I see this narrative of either artwork or photography and the narrative is like, damn, I want to see what this is. And then you look at the image and say, what? Wait a minute. Now, the narrative sometimes is better than the image, right? So I'm all, and that's not to say anything, because some images evolve through narration in terms of what the artist was thinking when he made this piece of artwork, right? But I'm always striving to take an image that speaks for itself. It may engender conversation after, but like a friend of mine out of Atlanta told me, you know, he was helping me edit some of my images for a show. And he said, I'm always looking for that wow factor when I'm looking at someone's work. So that's what I'm always trying to capture that wow factor. The narration is something in addition to. Thank you so much. That's, that's so good. That's so interesting. Uh, so how did you come to, you know, you talked about this a little bit already about how you were inspired and it became a passion, but I just kind of wanted to know how did you come to select this as your career choice? That's, that's a good question. Uh, I think it chose me because I, I finished college in a county. I had I didn't finish grad school, but I had like two years of marketing, taught an MBA, and then I've had several different kinds of jobs. But I was always taking photos. So the last job I had, uh, and then I retired from that world then it was all about photography, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think it like chose me. I never thought I would be a photographer. 
And it's still hard for me to assign that to myself. And it's something that John Scott said when they made a presentation and more, they introduced him for a talk. It was the same night that uh, Elizabeth Catlett and Jacob Lawrence were speaking. And they gave him this glowing introduction. And he said, well, I'm not an artist. I can't call myself an artist because I mean, that's up to my community to call me an artist, but I can't call myself an artist. Well, that was so humbling to me. If John Scott doesn't think he an, he's an artist, then I'm not a photographer. Right? And people say I'm humble, but it's not, it's not being humble. It's the realization. It's hard to explain in an, this interview that I've been inspired by so many people and their work is so outstanding that I, I, I can never put myself in their category, right? Because, I mean, I know John Scott, I know Ron Bashe, I know Martin Payton, you know, I know a compliment of fantastic photographers. I just, I just uh, became friends, not became friends, but we hit it off when I met him. His name is Adger Cowens. Your listeners might want to look this guy up. Um, so he came down here. He's also a great artist. And he belongs to, he co-founded Africobra, which is the artist side of him. And then he also is a member and a co-founder of Komoinge, which is a photography group. And we like hit it off when he was in town. So I'm in constant contact with him. And um, it's, it's always an interesting conversation with him because I'm always learning something. I'm always seeking to learn more and more and more. And then by taking a lot of photos, then, you know, it, it becomes something that you do, just like knowing aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, that you're able to set your camera without really thinking about it, you know, in order to capture the image. And it's the same thing with seeing certain things that, that I like to take photos of things that I'm attracted to that speaks to me. And if it speaks to someone else, fine. But I'm always seeking to capture that image. Thank you. Um, just um, in light of current events, how has your work setting been changed or how have you adapted to the current era of COVID in your work? I have to go back before COVID hit. I was, I was recently, um, I recently became a air person, uh, artist in residence at Joe Mitchell Center, which was a fantastic experience, right? And then when I was at the Joe Mitchell Center, I wanted to photograph the culture, but I wanted to do it a little bit different. I wanted to take portraits of the masking Indians, but I also wanted to photograph them outside of their suits. And I did it as a diptych. The Indian suited person would be in color. And in the diptych, the person, the persona outside of their suits would be the persona I was trying to capture. And that would be in black and white and did a diptych. But in, in dealing with these, these folks, I need to make an appointment with them, right? So while I was waiting, time was going by, waiting to make an appointment with them to come in and be photographed, I started wandering around the campus at Joe Mitchell Center and I've come up on a certain thing. I started doing still life. So in answer to your question, COVID hits, I'm no longer at the Joe Mitchell Center because the time had expired I started doing the same thing since I was not going to compromise going out and interacting with people. I still was shooting some things, right? But I was limiting my exposure, so to speak. So I started walking. When I'd walk in City Park, I'd pick flowers and stems and different things and I'd come back to the house and set up a makeshift backdrop. And then I started doing what I call uh, flora. No, impossible flora in a time of COVID-19. So I just tried to let my imagination run wild 
and taken some of these images. If you want me to include some of those images, I can do that also. Yes, I believe that's so timely. And I would love to see a new series that you're working on. That sounds really interesting and amazing. Um, the next question, uh, just what is the most challenging thing about being a photographer? I know you touched on this a little bit earlier, but what would you think is the most challenging thing? Trying to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, and, and as an artist, you know this. I mean, that's the you have to live, right? There are other things outside of your art that you have to take care of, right? You have to. You're in, you're still in school, but uh, you know once you hit the real world, uh, then you have to find a way to make a living, right? And, uh, you know, I don't have an MFA, so I couldn't teach, right? I have mentored photographers, but I don't, I don't do any formal teaching. So, so you have that avenue open to you also. But uh, I know a lot of artists teach. They just don't do artwork. I know a lot of photographers who have their own, have their own businesses. I'm just trying to crack into what I call the uh, fine art world, right? But uh, yeah, making a living, you know, so you can continue to shoot. And of course, in terms of artists, continue to make art. And on the opposite side of that, what would you say is the most rewarding thing about being a photographer? The validation of someone looking at your image and they say they like it. Yeah. You know, to me. To me, you know, I've heard some artists and photographers say, I, I don't need validation. Well, every image you take, every piece of art you have, put it in the closet and don't show anybody. Because that's foolish to say that you don't need validation because you're not doing this in a vacuum, right? You're putting it on the wall. The other thing is in putting your work out there, you have to be, you can't be overly sensitive. Right. If you put yourself out there, then you put yourself out there for criticism. Right. And sometimes the criticism is good and sometimes it's not so good. But you also have to understand where this criticism is coming from, because some people are just going to critique you outside of a positive critique that is going to you going to enable you to go forward and get better. But that's that's validation. When, when someone says, I like what you're doing. I can speak to that, I can speak to that. Uh, are there any resources that you could share or like to share for those who are interested in pursuing photography, no matter, you know, as a passion, as a career or as a hobby? Well, practice the three fundamentals, know what those fundamentals are and how they can be applied. The other thing is read read i mean you know learn as much as you can about your craft i mean not just don't limit yourself to reading about photography you know expand your scope and look at artwork when i'm talking to some young photographers say you want to learn lighting go to a museum and look at the uh the uh old world artists and look how they use light how they painted with light i'd like to you know use that term and, uh, you know, they got the Rembrandt way of lighting. They got so many different ways of lighting that has been around, which you try to do if you like that particular kind of lighting, then you try to duplicate it as best you can. And in doing so, you will come up with your own sense of lighting. So just familiarize yourself with what other people are doing. You don't have to be influenced by it, right? But you can be inspired by it. That's where to live by. Uh, just would you like to share your website or social media for those who would like to look and see more of your work or learn more about you as an artist? Sure, it's Eric Waters Photography 504.com. And is there anything else you would like to share just in general with our audience before we finish the interview? I'm just enamored by you artists. I, I need in order to photograph something, I need a subject. Y'all sometimes come up with this artwork out of whole cloth, so to speak, right? And I've always been enamored by how an artist can look at a 
a blank canvas or a piece of clay or some steel or aluminum or whatever your medium is. And out of your imagination, you create something so wonderful. Right? I mean, the, the human form, the human face, the human interaction is great. And I think the side of photography that, that I'm most interested in is trying to capture that. But you guys come up with something beyond that, right? And I'm not there. <laughs> I just try to capture images that, uh, that have an effect. You know, I try to capture my, the culture that I'm dealing with. The other thing I want to, if you have a minute, that what I want to try to say to the audience is that get the, if, if you're interested in photography, get Reflections in Black by Deborah Willis. It chronicles Black photography and photographers from 1840 to present. Presently, Kalamu Yasalam came with this idea of doing a book and he has graciously brought me on board to work with him on it. So we are trying now, we're going to, we're doing some research to try to go back. We know about Jules Leon, who was the uh, free man of color who brought photography to New Orleans in 1840, daguerreotype type photography to New Orleans in 1840. So our research is trying, and the, the book is going to be in two portions, historic photographers and contemporary photographers in New Orleans, working in New Orleans. And uh, we're doing research now trying to find those photographers who existed in the uh, mid 1800s to the early 1900s. We, got, we have people that we can deal with from the 1900s going forward. But uh, right now we did some research at the Amistad collection. We got some photographers, the 1860, 1870. And our next stop is gonna be Xavier University to explore their archives. But in their archives, they have this, this great, great photographer. And, and I like to um, ask all photographers who may be listening or interested in photography, look up Arthur Baidu. He's one of the, one of the greatest photographers in photography history, and he's right here in New Orleans, but he also was the head of the photography department at Tuskegee Institute. But he photographed Marcus Garvey. He was the official photographer of Booker T. Washington. He was also the official photographer of Xavier University, and he, he did a lot of work with the nuns. So I would, uh, but the book itself would be a great, great start. And, uh, and uh, I think it would be of interest to anybody that's interested in photography. Well, thank you so much and sharing so much of your knowledge and information. I just really thank you for being with us today. Thank you.